what do the Siberian tundra, hills in the deep ocean, and cow farts have in common? Well, you might not be an expert on all of these things, but you're probably aware of climate change. When someone says global warming, you might think of images like these, factories and vehicles that emit pollution and carbon dioxide. But actually, that's not the whole picture. What about cows? Livestock emissions may even contribute more to climate change than car emissions. They're powerful because they are not composed of carbon dioxide, but of a different greenhouse gas, methane. So how do these greenhouse gases work? Well, when sunlight hits the Earth, part of it is absorbed and re-emitted as invisible infrared light into space. Greenhouse gases, like CO2 molecules in the Earth's atmosphere, absorb some of the energy and then re-emit it, keeping the Earth at a comfortable temperature for life as we know it. With more CO2 in the atmosphere, more energy is absorbed and held back on Earth. However, CO2 can only absorb some frequencies of energy and so, each new CO2 molecule has less of an additional effect. There's just so much energy of that range that's already been captured. On the other hand, methane absorbs different frequencies than CO2. Adding just a little bit of methane to the atmosphere suddenly has a great effect because it can catch some range of energy that was missed by the thick layers of CO2 already in the atmosphere. So where does all this methane come from? Under high pressures and cold temperatures, water molecules trap these methane molecules and create a sort of chemical cage around them called a clathrate. As temperatures rise, these clathrate cages become unstable and break into water and methane gas. These clathrates are found in the deep ocean, where there is high water pressure. However, as climate changes, these solid methane deposits expand into gas, forming bulges in the ocean ground. These hills grow and burst, releasing methane bubbles through the ocean and into the atmosphere. Just one cubic meter of clathrate can release 164 cubic meters of free gas. Now that's a lot of methane. Furthermore, large deposits of frozen organic material are located under the Siberian tundra. This organic material contains methane like a clathrate. With rising temperatures, the permafrost will melt, releasing methane gas along with carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. But why worry about methane? What about forest loss, rising ocean levels, energy needs? What about the apocalypse? Well, hopefully that's not anytime soon, but as you might have figured out by now, these problems all are interrelated. Carbon dioxide emissions increase warming, which melts ice and releases methane into the air while causing oceans to rise. That methane causes more warming, which melts more ice and releases even more methane. It's a cycle, and it's not even that simple. Methane acts on every scale, from the atomic to the geological, and what's more, the full extent of its effects are still not entirely understood. But both carbon dioxide and methane are big problems, and methane might be the easier one to solve. So this is where we need you! Scientists and engineers are hard at work on ideas such as generating clean energy from excess methane in factories and landfills, oceans and farms. But we need many more bright minds working on solving this problem. We need writers, activists, and members of our Earth community to raise awareness of these concerns. Will you take action?